guys, Greg Danny again. Got a couple more questions I wanted to answer. One of the questions was, what's, what's one of the best ways to raise some money before you go out traveling? And it's a fantastic question. If you can, if you can get the ball rolling and get things going in your favor before you go, all the better. Now, I know in this audience, there's all kinds of personalities and, and uh, you know, tolerance to risk. Some, some people will just say, I'm out of here, and they'll go to the airport, buy a ticket, and go somewhere, or hop in their car and just drive until they stop. And, and others want to have big savings set up, everything lined up back home, everything lined up out where, before they go, have a nice income, and, and they're not leaving their house until everything's lined up. And then there's a whole range in between. And uh, whatever works for you is what you have to figure out and, and make it work. One of the first things, though, across the board in this, in this great community inside How to Fund Travel, as we talk about that, almost every single one of them, uh, these travelers who were either moving abroad or going to travel long term, they, they wanted to minimize expenses and uh, possessions. And that was one of the first things you can do is take a look at what you're spending. Because maybe maybe your income's enough if you'll just drop your expenses, right? It's just like getting a, a big old raise because you've eliminated some bills. So take a careful look and say, what, what cost can we start eliminating in preparation for that goal to go travel? What things could we sell and, and get a little more capital? Uh, one family we interviewed, they, they thought, you know, if we, if, we, if we sacrifice a little bit, we can drop from, they had three cars, they dropped two and then dropped one. They cut out cable. Uh, they, they started selling some of their, their bigger furnishings. And, and they just really cut back. And all of a sudden, boy, he was with his, with his income where they were kind of just moving along. Now they were able to sock away money each month. And it made a huge difference. And like I say, almost across the board with all these travelers, they started becoming minimalists and really cutting back. And it, then you can get savings you can set aside for investment or use that money now to purchase anything you might need to start building your online business. It's really a great thing to look at first is say, where can we free up some capital? Now, as far as making money, uh, there's lots of options. There's a couple of travelers, at least a couple of them, inside How to Fund Travel that said, you know what, I, I need to make a big chunk of cash in a few months so I can go out and, and live for several months inexpensively. And so these two, they, one of their options was to head to Alaska. And they went up there and they worked the summer tourist season. And they're able to sock up lots of money and then live, literally live on that money the rest of the year, you know, being frugal. And, and so they work, hey, if I work hard for four months, then I can take seven, eight months and, and go out and travel and enjoy. One family of five did that. And they, they traveled all over the U.S., just on money they'd both made uh, while they were living in, in Skagway, Alaska. And another friend, he would, he would come down and pick up little teaching jobs in Central America. Uh, right now he's actually over in Africa trying to climb uh, Kilimanjaro. And, and he's in the community too. He's over in Africa, but he would, every summer he'd go up and he'd work uh, up uh, near the ski resort um, outside of Anchorage. And just loved it up there. He'd go up and sack, sock away some money and then head out and... and he could learn, earn a little income while he was out abroad because he had that savings. Another option, and, and I highly recommend this, please do this. If you're serious about this, please read these two books. The first one is by Laurel Langemeyer called Cash Machine. And her focus in there is take a good look at your talents, your skills, your abilities, something you're already doing, and how can you even take what you do at work and do that same thing, maybe consulting on the side or a little bit of, of personal training or, or how can you take what you already know and do and, and turn it into cash. The second one is Cash in a Flash by Robert Allen and Mark Victor Hansen. Again, same thing. Man, they just throw out all kinds of great ideas of how to raise some capital fast, uh, how to turn, turn some real estate, how to uh, look for an opportunity to buy and sell, how to take your talents, whatever you can do. And, and in an earlier video, I also mentioned my friend Michelle. In her course, if she went out and, and said, look, what do I need to learn? Or what do I want to learn? And you can take this, if I'm passionate about something, is it a skill I already have? Is it a natural ability that I have? But she went out and said, look, this company is willing to pay me 
to do their administrative stuff online. So I'm going to learn administration. And she did. And this company over here, they're willing to pay me for marketing. They want someone to handle their, their social media marketing. Well, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it very well. And I'm going to provide, I'm going to deliver the goods and they'll pay me for it. And, and again, I, mean, I mentioned her course. She's telling you very clearly what it is you can do for, maybe it's customer service. That you just you you handle customer service for a small or medium sized business or an entrepreneur or administrative part or marketing or web design or whatever it is whatever kind of fulfillment you can offer there there are just so many ways so again I highly recommend those two books and take a look at Michelle's courses those are three great resources right there if you're willing to invest some some time and some money it's going to give you so many options of ways that maybe you don't even know that are just, just right there within your reach of something you're passionate about, something you know, something you may already be doing, or something you want to start doing. And, and just right there, you could start bringing in a little extra capital that would then start going a long way. Next question was, hey, is there, is there a community out there? Is there a group of like-minded people who, who aren't, this is what he said, he says, aren't just drinking the Kool-Aid like all the other sheeple? Right? And yes, there is a group. That's, that's what we want How to Fun Travel to be. We want it to be this group of people who are, have these, a similar dream to live abroad or, or travel often or travel long term or travel full time. People who are out, you know, trying to really live, uh, trying to live deliberately, trying to, to live their dream. Now, I don't pretend to, to say that everyone should have the dream of of going out and traveling the world. If they don't, if it's not their dream, it's not a dream. And I don't think everyone should have that dream. But I definitely believe that if it's your dream, you should pursue it. And you should surround yourself with people who are gonna support you and, and cut back your learning curve and, and help you figure things out so you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. And they're gonna cheer you on as you go forward. Okay? That's the kind of group and that's the kind of community we've created in How to Fun Travel. Awesome, a group of great people. Who, who really are consciously trying to live more deliberately. It's awesome. And so there's, it's a great opportunity just to build friendships in there and, and to have this you know, network of people who are like, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. And, and there's other people doing it. Sometimes you just feel so alone. I know when we started out, we just felt totally isolated. We thought we were the only ones that wanted to live like this because we were surrounded by people who were like, are you crazy? Why would you do that? Right? And then we found this group and, and all these great friendships we've built of people who are like, yeah, make it happen. Okay? So those are a great community, a, a great resource, and it's fun and enjoyable and lifelong friendship. Next question. And we've got a few questions like this. And hey, what's, what's the best way? What's the easiest way? What's the least time-consuming way? And there's several principles there. One, I mean, you really got to be realistic about it. Most of it's going to take a lot of work. Now, some of the people we've tra interviewed uh, inside How to Fun Travel, now, I mean, they got a cushy. They work a couple hours a week, and everything's rolling, and it looks awesome. And you're like, yeah, I want that guy's life because he works three or four hours a week, literally, lives like a king, does whatever he wants with his family. Well, he worked like a dog to make that happen. And he built that up. He put in the time. He stayed up late. He got up early, sweat and tears grinding and just hard work to build the system that now he just oversees. And, and that's happened in all kinds of, all kinds of ways. Uh, I have friends who built up stores. He's got stores and kiosks in several malls. And he built that up, and now he just kind of oversees it. He literally works a couple hours Monday morning, and that's about it. He's hired managers, has people in place to run his whole business. Uh, another friend that's it's inside How to Fun Travel. He set up a web design and marketing and built it all up and, and, and went, you know, busted his tail selling, 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 selling. And now just word of mouth marketing comes in and, and people keep sharing. He gets referrals and they just keep coming to him now. He doesn't have to really go out and get more business. They come to him and he outsources any of the work that he can. And so now he's built a system that works. So there's going to be some hard work. Another one is, is logistically, you know, you really got to work even when you're on the road, unless you, you save up big chunks and then live off that. If you want to earn while you go, you've got to be able to keep working. And that's going to require, you know, internet coverage, 
uh, if, if you're doing it online, it's going to require time and location. You know, location matters to, to where, hey, where can I sit down and get some quiet, uninterrupted work where I have good internet, where I have access to what I need. Um, and, and so a lot of travelers, they're kind of slow travel. They've kind of made that schedule, kind of throw that in that timeline so they can say, hey, we're going to go to the next place and we got to settle down for a couple of weeks so I can really crank in some work or for a couple of months, whatever it is you want to do. Another option, and, and this is one of the greatest principles. It really fits with, with what we talked about in the beginning. What do you do before you go? And it, and it fits with what do you do while you're on the road? You've got to learn to become an opportunist. You got to look for opportunities. You know, you catch great ideas. And, and I like, I enjoy doing this, just capturing great ideas or seeing great models. You know, I, I went to, to one town and they had the best smoothie shop I've ever been to. It was fantastic in a warmer climate, right on the square, tiny bit of real estate, you know, a couple of employees. It was so nice and neat. I'm not, not huge overhead costs. And they were busy. I mean, they were just cranking out money and just turning it, turning it, turning it. That was one of the best ideas I've ever seen. And then all through Central and South America, I mean, all over the place, boy, isn't there a great town that would just, you know, that business would do really well in that town? Absolutely, right? Well, what are you going through? Hey, this, this town's missing this opportunity. It's missing this business. Uh, look for a need and fill it. Or you get online and say, you know, there's, there's this whole group of people. They're just screaming out for, how do I do this better? And maybe you have the answer or can find the answer. You grab 10 books on the subject, you pound them, you become an expert in it, and, and you provide that service. Whatever it is, you start looking for those opportunities. And it may be that you pick a spot and you're like, hey, I want to go live in this general area or in this country. And you go there and you, you look for an opportunity. Uh, there's one guy just a couple hours from me here in Costa Rica. He came over from Europe and he saw this little nice little expat community going there and things are like, what can I provide? He opens up this gym and he's killing it. He's doing so well. And he teaches, you know, personal training. He teaches classes in uh, martial arts and aerobics and weight training. And he's just, just nailing it. I mean, and people love him and his business is thriving and he's like, hey, I want to live there. He moved over there. So what can I provide? These are the skills I have. This is the business opportunity, the business investment I can make. And he made it happen. So you start looking, uh, you change your mindset, right? You got to shift that and kind of change the lens you're looking through and say, well, yeah, I, I never thought that I, this skill or this passion I have could be turned into a business or your, your previous business experience, whatever it is. If you switch your mind to see opportunities or needs, that's a great one, or desires. You know, people really want something or really need something, and you can step in there and provide it. And there's so many opportunities. Don't, don't ever allow yourself to get that lack mentality that there's not opportunity to really make things happen. And if one town has it, go to the next one and start up. It's literally that easy. I'll go into one town, and there's like six or seven of the same little successful business and it's kind of getting oversaturated in that market you go 30 minutes or an hour the other way to a, an equally great town and there's nothing you're like man one of those businesses here or two or or if i kind of own the shop and i kind of i got the carts going around and, and i kind of dominate the market and you can clean up and we've met so many local business owners with that kind of entrepreneur mentality where they've come in they say okay i'm going to open a phone kiosk or I'm going to open uh, this little restaurant stand, literally little food stands selling tacos or whatever it is. Or, hey, man, travel kind of stinks in this town. I'm going to buy one of those little tuk-tuks, you know, those little three-wheel motorcycle gigs. And, and, and an investor will come in and say, I'll buy three of those, put them to work, pay the guy. And they rent it out for $100 a day from me. So I got 300 bucks a day coming in. I do nothing just because I recognized I saw a need for a little more transportation or, you know, this little food stand did so well in this other town. I'm going to open up three of them over here. I'm going. Okay. A friend of mine realized that there was a need for clean bottled water. Then I'm going to come in. I'm going to open up two stores and get a truck. And bam, you've got to, got to hold on the market and selling great bottled water. Because there wasn't, you know, and he'd seen the business doing well in other cities. 
but then said, man, in this town, they don't have it. I'm going to provide it. And so if you'll, if you'll make that shift and, and read those books I recommended, man, just this world of opportunity opens up and you can really start making things happen. So far, everything we've talked about fits into the next question of how do you set up a timeline for how long you're going to travel? And we personally, and a lot of people we've interviewed and talked to, a lot of people in the community, they kind of set up, well, what are my expenses going to be? And we talked about that a little, saying, okay, let's, how can we minimize, where, where do we want to be in our expenses? I want to be able to rent this kind of place. I want to be able to do these kinds of activities. I want to be able to eat this kind of, this menu. And I want to have this kind of lifestyle. And, and then, you know, add, hey, here's some extra expenses, unforeseen. There's little costs here and there. I want to be able to live like this and get that number and then say, okay, well, how much money have I saved? Um, I know a lot of people that live on savings and what they bring in because what they bring in just isn't quite enough. So they put the savings together. And so you start figuring out that way. These are my exact costs. And again, inside the community here, it's a great place to find out what are real costs. If they want to live like this in this place. What was your guys' experience? How much did it cost? With every single person I interview, we go through what their monthly expenses are, what their lifestyle costs. And so you get a great idea of where they are or where they were and what they were paying to live and, and, and what kind of lifestyle it brought them. So if you can get a good number on that and a pretty good rough estimate, then you know, okay, this is these are our expenses. Now, how can I put together that funding? And if it comes from that combination, maybe two or three income streams, uh, maybe you know, work you might be able to do there once you get on the ground and combine that with savings or some investments you have. Uh, some, a lot of people just, you know, I met several European travelers. They had, they had bought a home. They could afford, they tried to pay it off as fast as they could. And then they just rented out and it was enough to live off the rent. They were pulling in, you know, 15, 1500 bucks a month or 2000 bucks a month. And that for them, the way they wanted to live, that was plenty to travel all through uh, Central and South America. And so they were able to make that happen just on the rent. Uh, so, so there's ways to make that happen. And, and their long-term was, hey, as long as we have renters, we're good. And so they would get long-term renters and they've been on the road for years, right? And they just keep going. So if you can, you can come up with that timeline, say, well, what do we really want? How long do we want to be out? Is there anything we need to be back for? Do we want to go indefinitely? Do we want to go from city to city city you want to go live here for several months or or do you want to go until the visa expires and then go to the next country until that one expires and just keep going but you've got to be able to fit your expenses and your income and match that up to with your desires and your lifestyle and you know and you'll and honestly you'll learn so much when you get on the ground as well you may get somewhere we've done this multiple times we get somewhere thinking yeah this this is where we want to be and we get there and think you know no, it's not quite what we wanted. Let's keep going. And then something that wasn't even on the radar pops up and we just absolutely love it and stay there. And there's been income opportunities in certain places that we never could have foreseen that we get there and say, hey, man, there's a chance to, to settle down and really work here or to earn an income in this place. And so we stay longer building that up or, or a chance to do good. Like in Guatemala, there was a great chance to build up a project and really make a difference. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, share this with, with people you know who'd be interested. Get in the comments here. Tell us what has worked for you or what you're thinking about doing. You know, get in, get in these comments. Let's start helping each other say, well, what do you think about this idea? Is this viable? Anybody tried this? You know, hey, I got this skill. How, how can I make that happen? And if we start masterminding together, we start bouncing ideas off each other and build a community, then we're going to be able to make things happen. And and you're going to get advice, you're going to get feedback, and you can really, you know, get that support you're after and cut back that learning curve. I just can't emphasize that enough to say, well, you know, take it this long to figure it out. And now with help people who've actually done it, you get back here. So share with us your ideas, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what you're going after, and, and where you want to go. We'd love to hear that. I hope you're excited. I hope now that with these resources and I take advantage of them, the ones I've shared, the books, the, the programs, I hope you're getting excited. I hope you're starting to see a vision. I hope ideas now are turning and you can start getting them on paper and start developing them and see how they work. This is so exciting and we're excited for you. Here's to 
to this future travel lifestyle that you're going to create. You can make it happen. There's going to be a lot of work, but it's absolutely worth it. Reach out.